Uh, but what's important about this is uh, the extension of our differentiation laws to functions of composition. And uh, this goes by the name of the chain rule. And your textbook uses two different variations to express the chain rule for some reason. So I'm going to go ahead and give you both of them. Um, this is probably the one I like best because this follows more directly from what we were just talking about. So uh, F is, big F is a function of composition, right? F is the result of composing F with G. So how do I take the derivative of big F with respect to the derivatives of the two smaller functions? Well, I take the derivative of F prime, uh, sorry, derivative of F, the outside function, and I evaluate it with the inside functions. That, so that first term is still the result of a composition, not with F and G, but with F prime and G. And then I get an extra factor. <coughs> the extra factor comes from the derivative of the inside function. So uh, uh, under the normal uh, notation that we use to express function composition, uh, what your book calls version 2 is probably the one that is most direct uh, from that definition. Um, but there's a second way. There's another way in which the, uh, your textbook wants to express this uh, chain rule and use, it uses differential forms, uh, it looks like this. Uh, this isn't quite as direct as the uh, other four format as far as identifying this as a uh, composition function. Uh, but we'll talk about this in a minute. We'll use this uh, to show you uh, that in the end it really doesn't make any difference which one of these we use. Uh, but in this context, um, that way we'll get to that. Uh, okay, so uh, let's do the thing that you know the same thing we did when we first introduced the product rule and the quotient rule. Let's show that there are some cases in which uh, we really don't need the composition rule uh, because they're simple enough that we can rewrite them in such a way that the composition rule or the chain rule is not needed. But let's show that we can do it both ways and that we'll get the same thing in both cases. Uh, so here's the function f of x is this. I guess I should call this big F because I'm about to rewrite this. I'm going to call that big F so that we can use our usual format. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and expand that out. That's the square of a binomial, so that can be e very easily expanded. I'll just go ahead and expand that out, and once the uh, parentheses are gone, then I won't need the chain rule anymore. Uh, so what is the square of 3x minus 5? Let's see. Inside, outside. Sorry, first outside, inside. Last. Let's see. So what am I going to get? 9x squared from the front terms. Inside and outside, I get the same thing, negative 15. So I'll have two of those. And then the negative 5 times 5 is 25. Okay, so there, now it's not a function of composition anymore. The parentheses are all gone, so I should be able to evaluate this through the simple derivative laws. Uh, what's the derivative of this function now? So again, I'm doing this the usual way. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and that 9 there sitting there waiting to do its thing. The derivative of x is 1, so that's 30, negative 30, that's still there and the derivative of the constant goes to zero. So in the end, 18x minus 30. So that's the derivative of this function under the expansion and applying the simple derivative laws. Um, let's go ahead and do that using the, the chain rule. Okay. So the chain rule problem, how do I take this apart? So what, how does this work? What's the outside function of composition? Oh, let's, start, let's start from the inside. What's the inside function? And the outside function? x squared. Okay, so there's the, that's the decomposition. Uh, big F is a result of replace of squaring 3x minus 5, so there's the substitution. 
Uh, but in addition to that, I'm going to need the two derivatives of these two component functions. So the derivative of the outside function is what? And the derivative of the inside function? Three. Okay, now I'm ready to apply the rule. According to the rule, f prime is going to be the derivative of f composed with g multiplied by the derivative of g. Okay. The derivative of f is this, but we're composing it with g, so I'm going to take g and plug it in for x in the derivative. There's a function composition now, uh, not with f and g, but with f's derivative in g. So what used to be g of x being squared is now going to be g of x being multiplied by 2. So the 2 in front, then the 3x minus 5. And then g prime. I said it's 3. So there's the first part of the chain rule a new function of composition based on the derivative of that original outside function and a brand new factor that comes from the derivative of g itself. And now what happens, well I've got two factors here they can be combined <coughs> and then I distribute and yep, got the same thing in both cases. Here, here, they're the same. Okay, but please notice what this is not. Right? Please don't do this. Right? The temptation is to treat the square power in the same way, or the square power applied to a uh, binomial in the same way that we would treat the square power being applied to the variable x. And uh, what I see a lot is this. The 2 comes out front as a multiplier, the new power 1 less than the old power, and now I think I'm done. Because that's the way x squared works x squared works with the square coming at the square power becoming the multiplier and just plain x. Um, but that's not going to work now because I've missed this extra factor through the chain rule. So that's not the way it works. Wish it was. Things would be much simpler. But the chain rule requires that extra factor. Okay, so this shows us that the chain rule, um, uh, in the end, does is more complicated than the simple application of the rules in the normal way. Uh, we still get the derivative of f with the evaluation at g, but uh, that extra factor that comes from the chain rule is what balances these things out. Without that extra factor, I wouldn't have the same thing in the expanded case and in the ap actual application of the rule. Um, okay, so um, good time to take my break. Okay, okay. nine, four, twenty-four. Uh, let's see, give me ten minutes. Usual thing. Okay, ten minutes.